Okay, so today, guys, we're back with another episode of Punt or No Punt, and I am thrilled to be able to welcome Christopher CG87 George. Chris, how are you doing today? Great. Thanks for having me. It's an absolute pleasure to have you on the show, guys. If you don't know who CG is, he is a fantastic Twitch streamer. He streams 200 and 500 Zoom on Twitch. I will leave the link to his Twitch stream down below. Chris, would you like to say anything about yourself? Introduce yourself to the guys if they don't know you already? Um, sure. Yeah, I've uh, been around poker for a little over 10 years. Um, started off playing mixed games first, which was a bit backwards than most people uh, would you know, start with. But mm. from there, I my game evolved to playing PLO. And then eventually I got back to playing No Limit Hold'em recently, uh, just because the game started dwindling so i can't really play too many mixed games online anymore and uh plo hasn't been very attractive to me so i guess no limit hold'em it is and yeah. uh yeah so now i'm back grinding no limit hold'em online uh during the pandemic i was mostly just playing online and before that i was traveling a bit and playing live but because again of the pandemic we're mm -hmm. now mostly a online no limit hold'em grinder and you're doing very well for yourself i might add um if you haven't checked out CG stream before it's incredibly educational um and it's just really good cool to see how you play um i personally really enjoy watching it if i'm trying to learn um so yeah guys definitely go and check that out i'll leave the link down below and if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you do enjoy punt or no punt guys then please go ahead and do so also drop a like on the video it really helps me out but for now chris cg are you ready to talk punt or no punt i am this is uh this is what i came for this is this is exactly what you've, your career is built to all that stuff before yeah. minor um so the yeah. rules if you're new um, a contestant today is CG, brings on seven hands, and I will decide, despite the skill gap between us, I will decide whether each is a punt or no punt. Now, I have asked CG to bring on a, uh, bring on seven hands, but I don't know what any of them look like. This is the first time I've ever seen any of these hands. Can you confirm that's true, Chris? You only just sent them to me. I, uh, I can confirm to my best knowledge that it is true. Then it's up to you from there. Um, <laughs> would you like to say anything about these hands before we begin? Um, sure. First off, they're all very recent. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to bring on hands that I remember my thought process for, mm -hmm. which uh, eliminates almost every hand about a month ago. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, I understand pre that. Pre previous to a month, because yeah. I have a pretty bad memory with that stuff. So yeah. this is all very recent. Um, and it's, I think, 200 and 500 Zoom. Okay. I don't know if it's, if there's anything different than that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the 500 pool is generally going to be tougher. Yeah. Um, so my play does tend to change a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so there's going to be a different dynamic for if it's 200 or if it's 500. Perfect. Well, guys, last thing from me, disclaimer. CG's a little bit better at this game than me. You guys know how it is. I get people on and they know a lot more about this game. So I'm going to try and extract a lot from CG, the most that I can. But at the same time, I need to make a decision for the show um and that's why i'll be talking but just don't take it as me trying to tell cg what to do i would i would never imagine that that would be possible so without further ado cg87 you rage play pun on open let's do it let's go okay guys hand number one and we have got king six of spades under the gun at 500 zoom is that correct yeah. yes some familiar faces on the table yep. and we <laughs> open under the gun now, I, um, I don't know if this is because of my rake structure, but I'm not opening this under the gun. Um, how often do you open this, and why are you making it 2x? Um, so, first off, uh, I'm making it 2x because, theoretically, in earlier positions, you have a higher chance of being 3-bet in position. Mm -hmm. So, generally, you want to size down um, so that when you do open and you get 3-bet, you can fold, and it's not going to cost you as much as if you, let's say, open to 3x or 2.5x. Sure. So I think the only reason that I'm doing that right now is generally because of the theory that in earlier positions you go smaller, um, it's more likely you get 3-bet with players left behind, and then you also have kind of an added bonus in that it exploits some players that are not defending their big blind enough, um, but overall, it's more of a theory-based reason as to why I'm in raising in under the gun as well as hijack, and then I raise larger on the cutoff and the button. Acceptable. No punt so far. But Thank how you. often are you opening king six under the gun? Is it all the time? 
Um, it's not all the time. It's about, uh, I think, anywhere between 30 and 50%. I would, okay, I would guess frequently. it's around, yeah, around there. Sure. It folds to Optic Adam. I don't know who this is. Do you, do you have any information on this on this man? Uh, Slash it's the reg at 500. I My notes aren't as detailed as a lot of other players. Also, my awareness of other players' tendencies is kind of low because I mostly focus on my own play in a lot of scenarios. So mm -hmm. all I know is that this guy is a reg. Okay. Let's take that to the flop, which we are going to after he defends. And ace-9... Queen flush draw. We have a backdoor flush draw. Optic Adams checks, and we have a decision. Um, what are you thinking about on this texture in these positions with your whole range? So, under the gun, we have a very high card heavy range. Um, obviously, it's going to be the spot where we're tightest, mm -hmm. and uh, Ace Queen Nine is a very good board for us. Um, our range interacts with it very well. We can often size up in this scenario. We have very strong hands like aces, queens, um, ace nine suited, et cetera, et cetera. And then Optic Adams is going to have some nines and ace queen. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a board that generally we can bet large on because we're going to have an equity advantage as well as a range advantage. However, we can't get out of line too often because Optic Adams can still have Ace Queen and Nines yeah. as well as Ace Nine. Yeah. Um, so it's a board that Queen. I could potentially overbet at a frequency. Okay. Um, but I tend to lean more towards my large sizing that I have. Yeah. Uh, in the spot. So big bet or check, really? You're using or? Yeah, especially with this particular hand, which is um, you know more polarized in the weaker part of our range if sure. we're only opening this 30 to 40 or 50 percent of the time it's going to be very far down in our range for hands that have you know connected connectivity with this board mm -hmm. king six of hearts would you start giving that up or um <laughs> i think that you could probably mix bet with that hand as well okay. um but this one is a bit more intuitive because of the backdoor spades mm -hmm. Um, it's a lot easier to play on spade turns, and uh, let's see what happens next. <laughs> we do go for one of our big bets, which we've discussed is reasonable. Optic Adams goes for the call. Um, so we learn some things. We learn that he doesn't have, you know, complete air. Um, right. But there are a lot of, of hands that Optic Adams can have, and I imagine that Optic Adams will be check raising a lot less when you use a big size than he may well have done when you used a, if you had chosen a smaller size. So still going to have. Um, you know, which I, th I imagine Ace Nine can't really raise here because of how st how strong the top of your range is. Obviously, um, would you say that he he would be constructing a raising range, or do you think he would just mainly continue with calls? Um, against the non overbet, I'm fairly certain that Big Blind can have raises here because of what I mentioned earlier. Yeah, um, sure. That they can have Ace Queen Nine Nine uh, Ace Nine, and the Nine sorts um, protection really doesn't it but at the same time. Yeah, in a, in a way, um, but also that you know we also have really strong suited connectors from the big blind here that we aren't three betting okay. um, pure. Mm -hmm. So hands like Jack Ten suited uh, of clubs, you know, have a lot of equity in this scenario. Mm -hmm. Cool. He goes for the call. That is a spicy turn, CG. I imagine we'll be <laughs> well, I imagine we'll be wagering some more money in this hand. Optigam's oh. checks, which uh, they'll do all the time. Right. I would expect. And now you have a sizing option on the turn. Talk to me about that. Yeah, so um, this turn also interacts with a lot of our range. Mm -hmm. um, we do have 100% of... Not 100%. We have a mix, I think, uh, of suited King-10. And then I don't think we have any off-suit King-10. But mm -hmm. we do still have Ace-Queen, Ace-Jack um sets like nines hmm. um because we didn't use the overbet we do have potentially some you know queen jack in our range at a frequency but uh it's not like a it's a it's an interesting card because it it brings in the nuts for both players at a frequency okay um so sizing scheme here on the turn similar to flop i would imagine 
Oh, we are overbetting. That's interesting because um, I'm wondering. What, so you're going to overbet, like obviously King Ten, I imagine, than this hand. But you've also got some hands, like you said, Queen Jack, that don't want to use this sizing. So you're using overbet and some smaller bets as well. I think I'm mostly overbetting or large betting. Okay. Um, I don't think range. I have. If I'm betting, I'm betting large or or over betting. Okay. Fair and um, the reason I chose the the larger size here is because this is um, part of a polarized range that I'm going to use. Like you mentioned, like Queen Jack isn't really a hand that's going to be nutted. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of you know bad rivers for it as well. Yeah. Um, and using different sizings according to your range is uh, really important in theory. Like if you were to just use one sizing here, um, you're missing out on on value bets with weaker hands, or you're not betting enough with the nuts. Or yeah, there's a lot of reasons to to vary two different sizings here on the turn. And this one in particular is, as we mentioned, it's bottom part of our range, right? Yeah. We're not really raising anything weaker, and it also has the added benefit of blocking the nuts with the king. Mm -hmm. And it also has the really strong spade draw that backdoored, and it unblocks clubs. So typically, when you overbet, you want to have some equity in the hands, uh, as well as potentially removing the calling effects of the big blind. Sure. Seems very reasonable to me. I can get on board with this. And Optic Adams, uh, I'm trying to think whether he'd want to have any raises against this. Um, I mean, just would, if he had a king 10 of hearts i don't know if he can defend the flop i'm not sure how much king 10 he has that isn't spades or clubs do you think he defends king 10 of diamonds flop uh i think so i think you he's think so? probably calling all king 10 on the flop um versus the three-quarter sizing but it wouldn't surprise me if maybe he's supposed to mix at a frequency mm -hmm. um and also wouldn't surprise me if he's supposed to raise at a frequency right on the flop okay do you think he wants to build a raising range here around King 10, or do you think he just wants to mainly play continues with calls? Um, that's a good question. Hmm. I would guess that most of the time, yeah, I don't know. Because we block the King of Spades, we kind of unblock the combos that want to have the raise. Mm -hmm. um, naturally, according to theory, I think you want to be calling when you have when you don't need as much protection in this scenario out of okay. position. So like if he had King 10 of hearts, I think that would be a good hand to put a min raise in or a small raise versus my overbet. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, this kind of spot, you know, yeah, I don't know. It's uh, I would say it's probably a mix with King 10, but if he, he'd be more incentivized if he had, if he didn't have the spade or the, the club. Yeah. To fur because he wants some more protection for his hand and he also probably wants to avoid something like the 10 of clubs popping off on the river um right and he guess what pull money and have control of the pot i'm just wondering because it's going to affect i imagine what <laughs> how much king 10 he has is going to affect what we want to do on the river i would have thought um optic adams checks and we have an option here so i just thinking about what sizing scheme that you'd maybe want to use here. Um, when you overbet the turn, are you saying that you have, you know, king? You're not saying king ten plus, but do you, do you maybe do you overbet queens on the turn? Would that be a hand that you would include in that in that sizing range? I think that's yeah. I think it's fair to include. Okay. Um, I think we can include most sets at a frequency for that sizing. Also, take note that the overbet wasn't a huge overbet. Sure, 120. It was just the 125% uh, mm -hmm. where I can actually even have a 150, a 175, and a 200 mm -hmm. if I wanted to. Yeah. We also have some 10-8, I think. Do you open 10-8 suited under the gun? Uh, yes. Yeah. So you got, you got... At a frequency, not at 100%. Sure. So we got a couple of combos of 10-8 suited as well, a reduced frequency. Yep. I'm just thinking about what sizing we want to use here, like whether we want to use um, maybe maybe all in and then a smaller size bet, maybe like 75% and all in to, to accommodate like queens and stuff. And then to, and then King 10 could go in the overbet range. I'm just not, I'm not sure where you want to fit this in, in terms of 
if you're going to bluff it, which I assume because we're <laughs> here, we are on flame pot or no point, you're going to. I'm just wondering what sizing that you think is most reasonable in that context. Should I, should I answer that or yeah, yeah. Do you want to take that, a guess? That, I mean, well, I I would I would imagine blocking a king seems like a good one to choose to pop in the overbet range, but I am open to being wrong as I often am. Yeah, I personally would use all in. Yeah, when you're when you're in a scenario and if you have the nuts like king ten, mm -hmm. um, this is a you know a theory concept where when you're constructing your range, if you're going to have the nuts and you and your optimum size is going to be all in, then you want to be balancing that with proper bluffs as well, mm -hmm. right? And you don't want to have hands that block villains weaker calling range. Um, that are folding, mm -hmm. right? So like, sure. you don't want to be blocking clubs in this scenario mm -hmm. um, because they can they can actually fold something like king eight of clubs potentially that maybe they uh, peeled out of position on the turn to an overbet. Yeah. Um, I'm not I'm not certain about that particular hand, but just giving you an example of yeah. what we're trying to not use as our bluff, mm -hmm. um, and then hands that block their calling range, which are going to contain a lot of king x in them in this scenario. Um, king 10, uh, maybe king queen mixes a call in this scenario. It's hard to say, uh, okay. off the top of my head. Um, but I do know that blocking the nuts is really important if we're going to go all in because villain's calling range is going to be very strong, uh, versus, uh, an all in size. So this hand, I think fits kind of perfectly into that category. Okay. Right. Um, I'm wondering if you ever want to give up. Probably not. Um, I think this is one of those hands that has a pretty good all in. If I were to get to the river with this hand, mm -hmm. um, also to piggyback off what I was saying before, the way that I look at hands um, are uh, derived from learning theory and uh, something that's called like AV bucketing. Okay. Are you familiar with the term? I'm familiar with the term, but I couldn't tell you what it meant. Okay, so like there's different categories of hands according to your EV. Okay. Um, so they're categorized by like trash hands, good hands, really good hands. Um, and in this scenario, when you want to use a polarized sizing, you want to have your really good hands, which are going to include like King 10, 10, 8, and maybe some sets. Mm -hmm. um, and then you want to have trash hands that have almost no showdown value and are certainly a bluff. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, bluffing with, like, a queen here for an all-in sizing doesn't make a ton of sense. Um, you could do it, but uh, in terms of, you know, what hands would be better, this one is probably better because it has almost absolutely no showdown value in the scenario. Yeah, and a queen so, does against, like, 10-9, something like that. Something. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, I don't know, maybe, like, there. maybe jack six suited of clubs, right? Yeah, like, sure. There's some yeah, yeah, yeah. combos like that that you can beat with the queen. Yeah, sure. So, so all in, in. Scenario, yeah. I would like to see you go all in. I already said that I'd like to see you go all in. You sound <laughs> like you'd want to go all in. And you do go all in. Yeah. And I can't and honestly, I can't in all honesty say that this would be a punt if you're going to go all in. That seems good to me. Um, yeah, so I always try to give my result before I see the action and I'm going with no punt. And okay. now we have to see if we can get it through, which would be nice. Mm -hmm. And we do. Yeah, I can't see anything wrong with this. I mean, I like having a king. I like, I like blocking the nuts, and I think that makes it a lot less likely he's going he's gonna to be able to find a call. Um, and yeah, like you said, we just don't show down. And I think this makes sense to include in, in the all-in sizing. So I can't, I can't in very good faith give you a punt for that one, CG. So you are 1-0 up. Um, well yeah, played hand. I wanted to start, I wanted to start, you know. You wanted to get on the board. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to ease into this, you yeah, know. It's going to okay. get... It's ramping up, Maybe is it? Maybe a little bit wild. But okay. I will I will say one thing yeah. about all these hands is mm -hmm. that I try to follow a theme in okay. a way okay. of understanding like EV bucketing and where we are in our range. Okay. It's storytelling. Uh, I like it. A little bit. Okay. Cool. Well, first time you want one nil. Shall we go and take another? Let's do it. Let's go. Hey guys, our second hand with CG up one nil after that reasonable bluff on the river. And we have Jack 10 off in the big blind. And again, we're at 500 zoom. And Edel Schimmel opens the button. El Predator folds. And we are in the big blind with Jack 10 off. 
It's a pure defend, I believe. We have three bet. What are your <laughs> what are the what are your frequencies for this? I I have don't think I've ever three bet this before, but I am tight. So, <laughs> what are your so, frequencies here? Um, I've recently switched ranges okay. to having a thirteen big blind three bet mm -hmm. from the big blind. Um, oh yeah, that is and big. So once I use the thirteen big blind sizing, it starts mixing in some ten jack offsuit as well as like king 10 offsuit, king jack offsuit, king queen offsuit. Um, so I, I've noticed that the Broadway offsuit combos are in there mm -hmm. for the larger sizing. Um, and I think that has something to do with maybe polarizing a bit more. Sure. Whereas if you have like a 10 big blind sizing, yeah. you're a little more linear with your range. Makes so you'll sense. notice like if you use the 10 big blind sizing, you'll have hands like 9-8 suited in there 100% or close to it. And then whereas you use the 13, you start flatting that at a mixed frequency, and then you even three bet these com kind of combos at a frequency. Okay, you're gonna have to drag me along for this one then. I'm in no man's yeah. land. Edel Schimmel goes for the I'll call. Pretend it's suited. I can do that. Well, it kind of <laughs> matters now though. <laughs> um, so pretty dry board that's gonna favor us um, quite a lot, especially if we're gonna use a polarized three bet strategy. We're gonna have a lot of strong ASEX, right? So um, I guess, I mean, it's just generally a very good board for a three better anyway. I imagine we're going to range for small here? Um, yeah, I think um, you have the option of a couple of sizings. Okay. And um, some parts of our range want to go small, some want to go large. Again, mm -hmm. it really depends on how strong the hand is and where it kind of falls in that equity buckets kind of concept I mentioned. Yeah. Um, so I think this particular hand is really bad. Mm -hmm. um, Terrible. Yeah. And uh, probably the bottom of our range, would you say? I mean, I can't see anything else that has like less equity and is also like not king high, you know, because king high is obviously a lot better than jack high. And we just have nothing going for us right. at all apart from a backdoor straight door, right? So so I think that's um, that's going to be in the back of my mind with this hand. And I think having a larger sizing makes sense okay um to start polarizing more uh, getting enough. to the river uh we also have some blocker removal effects mm -hmm. um with the ace jack and ace 10 yeah because obviously he's defending ace jack oh i mean ace jack off is that a four bet for the button because it's kind of going to matter isn't it um how often he four bets both ace jack suited and ace and ace jack off suit because yep. the jack obviously to the heart that's gonna that's gonna matter. I was thinking whether he would have more if he has more ace jack suited, then obviously we don't want to have or or by the river it depends. Um, so what what would you say about that from the button's perspective? Like, what is he? Would you expect him to have more of? As again, against the sizing, against the thirteen big blind sizing, um, you're gonna have a lot less flatting going on okay. uh, with the off two combos. Whereas if I had made it ten big yeah, blinds, sure. you can start mixing in some flatting with uh, hands like ace ten and mixing four bet uh you mix four bet on in both sizes though mm -hmm. so yeah you're correct that you're not supposed to have too many um ace jack or ace 10 offsuit combos but you will have the suited versions of those yeah so he he's going to four bet the suited ones less right 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 just just making sure well, the, the suited ones are virtually never four bet yeah exactly so having the jack of hearts may be less good because that means he has three combos of ace jack suited um, correct so would you not rather have a different jack um i mean ideally yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't live in a perfect world do we cg no and you can't always <laughs> spend uh, some money in then <laughs> it's the best hand all the yeah. time right so we half pot the flop and you've already talked about how you i mean i guess when you say you want to use a bigger sizing you want you don't really want to go bigger than this right because the board texture is so so dry um you're still going to be able to apply a lot of pressure to his range with half pot you don't need to go like two thirds right would that be fair I think it's fair for the most part in three bet pots, unless you have a very specific board texture, you're not mm -hmm. going to use larger than a 50% sizing. But mm -hmm. if we had something like ace king, ace queen here, um, we are mixing the half pot sizing in. So okay. just as kind of like a range construction thing, it's important to have some weaker hands. We're going to throw in the half pot sizing as well. Makes sense as part of that strategy for sure. And I imagine Edgel Schimmel will not be playing raises here. Would that be fair? 
I think this is a board you wouldn't want to raise on versus this sizing in particular. Versus the half pot sizing, you generally tend to not raise very often mm -hmm. on boards that favor the three, bet. uh, three better. Mm -hmm. So, for example, on like a king queen board, like a king queen four rainbow board, if I half pot there, I think there's virtually no raises. Mm -hmm. However, on an ace seven, ace nine, six board, it is. Um, it is possible you can find some raises here because keep in mind we're in the big blind too. So we do have um, a less condensed range than if we were in the small blind. Mm -hmm. What do you um, expect your half pot sizing to fold out that maybe a third pot, for example, would not have done? Um, it's a little bit less about targeting mm -hmm. um, and more about sizing theory. Okay. For me, so Fair like, enough. I'm not really targeting any hands yet on the flop. I'm just looking at whether or not my hand plays well as a bet. Okay, that's interesting. That being said, um, a small sizing is definitely viable. Mm -hmm. So, it's going to be one of those things where maybe I'll mix a half pot, maybe I'll mix a third, depending on what I roll. Okay, that's fair enough. Let's see a turn then. And Edel Schimmel certainly has all of his sets, two pairs, etc. Was the point I was trying to make before. Um, right. So we need to be careful. He's obviously, and when I say like uh, what I expect to fold stuff like maybe, you know, I mean, I guess pocket eights would have to fold for sure against this sizing, probably against one third as well. I'm not, mm, maybe not. Um, see, that's the kind of it, the cutoff I was interested in. The, the turn yeah. is the turn is, is giving us some hope. Um, so I guess if you're going to use this hand on the turn as a large sizing, you're going to want to barrel this. Right. Um, would that be fair? Or would you consider I check jamming? I would, I would consider that to be very fair. Mm -hmm. um, check jamming is actually pretty cool, but I think mm -hmm. I would prefer to do that with clubs. Yeah, um, and more equity, right? Uh, it's yeah, yeah mm -hmm. pretty much. But like, there's hands like seven, eight, maybe of clubs that I think I would choose before I chose yeah, Jack Ten. Yep. Um, to do that with. So I would probably want to do something, yeah, like a large size with Jack-10 and, and potentially barrel off. Um, the relevance of the uh, blockers are now starting to matter more yeah. in terms of understanding what villain's getting to the river with, right? Okay, yeah. So blocking the 10 of spades is maybe good, maybe bad, I don't know. We'll have to see. Well, you, we want him to fold Jacks and 10s that doesn't fall back pre and you are never obviously going to get a fold from ace 10 or ace jack i'm still concerned about our jack of hearts because obviously ace mm -hmm. jack is going to be a pure continue that's us whatever we do on the on the turn um so i'm not in love with the jack of hearts the the ten of spades for the other reason seems fine um but i guess ace, i don't know whether ace jack or ace 10 is going to be a better cooldown for him i'm not sure but he still does have a lot of very good hands he's gonna have some ace right. queen he's gonna have some sixes nines ace nine uh, so, an a, a six suited, probably not versus your sizing pre. Um, he'll probably have a six suited. Mm -hmm. So he has a lot of good hands. Um, or, or not that we don't, obviously. Um, we choose to go for um another half pot sizing. Yeah. Um, and I guess that just looks like fairly reasonable with the after we use because obviously if you were gonna third the flop, you may consider using two thirds on the turn. You're using half a half volt, which basically means you have the same sort of shove on the river, right? Right. So, um, again, I'm thinking about theory here. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I want to perfectly polarize my range, uh, you tend to use like what's called the geometric growth of the pot. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be perfectly half pot, half pot, half pot. Okay. Um, and that'll allow you to polarize your range to, you know, the top of it and the bottom of it um, at the optimal sizing. Now you could also have a small sizing and then that's going to change the geometric growth in your sizing on the turn and river. Mm -hmm. um, or you can still get a little bit, you know, wonky and go small, large, small, or there's, there's a lot of viable strategies, but I think the highest EV thing is with a perfectly, I, I put in air quotes perfectly polar because it's not mm -hmm. really perfectly polar, sure. but a more polarized strategy would, would want to lean towards the geometric growth. Reasonable. 
Edel Schimmel calls, and I think again having shoves here would be a mistake. Probably. Um, I can't. I mean, he's never folding on any river with, with like sixes or nines or I guess ace nine. Maybe there's a couple he's uncomfortable on, but with the price right. he's going to be getting, I don't think he needs to protect those hands now. So, and on a lot of rivers, he's going to be very safe with those. So, I think calling is fair with his hole continues, right? Yeah, I think I think that's that's fair. You can maybe work in some raises, but I mm. think for the most part, you're going to mostly be calling. Um, also, note that the back door, you know, suit is clubs, and we don't have any clubs. Which so I assume you'd you know, like. Um, by the river. For yeah, sure. by the river when you're bluffing. When you don't hit, yeah. Um, okay. He calls, and the river is a queen. Um, and, I mean, I guess we have to be all in. <laughs> I mean, I guess we have to be all in, but I guess that's what you're going to do. It's just whether I, whether or not I like it or not. Is that And that is the key. Um, mm -hmm. I am not sure. I mean, I feel like he has just, like, Still loads of really good hands. I'm wondering what he calls the flop and the turn with that we now want him to fold for less than half pot on the river. That's what concerns right. me. What do you think those hands would be? Or do you not care what those hands would be? Because you're just doing that thing that you said you're doing. <laughs> yeah. So like again, in my head, I'm not really yeah. thinking about what care. he's folding out. I'm thinking okay. about what am I going to be properly bluffing by the river here if I have a polarized range. Okay. Um, and, you know, Jack-10 high is not going to win at showdown most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, because if we check, then they're probably going to bluff their 7-8 and whatever mm -hmm. weaker hands they have. Um, so so okay. this hand seems like, to me, it would be an all right jam here. Um, just based off of the fact that I'm going to have some Queen X as well by the river that I'm betting flop and then getting to the turn and then you'd bet some queen um, which queen x would you bet the turn with like ace queen is that it that's uh, it, right? yeah mostly but um it's not non-existent in my range okay to have the really strong hands and then i have some hands like ace king that still i think can shove river for value oh yeah um because there aren't too many combos of queen x that villain's gonna float here so we're not really worried too much about the queen. He has um, very few queen X. Right. He's got like maybe some jack queen suited that he floated flop or she, um, or king queen uh, suited maybe that that peels the flop. But remember we talked about how we use the polarized sizing on the flop. So it's yeah. a little less likely they float wide with a queen on this particular texture. Indeed. So I think most of the time we're looking to make something like asex indifferent. Um, and then we have a half pot sizing left on the river, which means we have to be careful with over bluffing or bluffing, you know, the wrong combos, etc. Mm. It's a very delicate scenario. I'll make a decision. I mean, I, I, I just can't see many, I mean, I know you don't think like this, but I have to make a decision with my capabilities yeah, and that's course. what I'm capable of. Um, I don't love having a, I don't love having a jack and a 10, but that's more turn Based, I think he has to fold a ten, tens and jacks on the turn. Um, probably, I don't see how he can defend those because they have such poor visibility for river. Um, uh, as far as what he's going to fold, we need him. To, we need, I think I feel like we need him to fold some ace x, like quite a bit of ace x. Um, mm -hmm. His best calls is going to be like, well, well, apart from the nuts, his best call downs are going to stuff like ace nine because he's going to block quite a few of our value combos. Um, and he has you think he's never going to fold an ace? Uh, well, he, he's going to need to, is what I'm saying, and I'm not, th I'm not thrilled about the idea of that. But we do have a bunch of Ace King. This is super weird. Like, I would rather use, like, I guess seven eight. But I, I think you want him to have seven eight. But at the same time, we also want him to have Jackson ten. So I, I'm not sure you're going to find it like an, an ideal combo here, um, to bluff. So, and I'm not in love with having. I, I feel like we, we might get called down by like Ace Jacks suited as well um it's interesting because i wonder whether he would want to have like <laughs> a, a jack that blocked a suited queen um for example um which 
if, if we have the jack of hearts he can't have but i'm not really sure exactly how that would feature uh, i'm just sort of just like trying to <laughs> work my way through this one yeah. um the way you yeah. put it is very convincing but i am not in love with having a jack and a 10 um so i am gonna go with punt but i do feel harsh you just you did sell it to me i was very i was very prepared after flop and turn to go with punt <laughs> but yeah. he doesn't have a lot of queen x and i feel like a lot of his ace x is gonna be in a tough spot but then again he is only gonna have to be right less than a quarter of the time when he calls um so yeah. i'm gonna go with punt if we if we are indeed all in which we are yeah. um i'm gonna go with punt um but it, it ain't spew if it gets through cg <laughs> so <laughs> let's have a look <laughs> And it does get through, and we take those. No, I'm, I'm, that, that's a good result. I am. I have to stick with my decision, though. I'm not going to change it. It's one one. Yeah. Do you feel hard done I, by? I do know the answer to this one actually, because oh, this one bothered know. me. Okay, what, what was the answer? So, uh, it, it, the combo I used wasn't supposed to use half pot on the flop. Yeah. Okay. Was well, that so, because of the jack of hearts? You think? Um, I think it had something to do with just the the equity of the hand mm -hmm. um, didn't want to go polarized because it didn't have a lot of great turns. Um, the suited combos of Jack-10, in fact, did use the 50% size. Because they have more backward uh, equity. Because I think it had more didn't, backward though. equity, yeah. With um, making, yeah. you know, hands that were happy to, to bet, bet, bet. Yeah. So this hand, if you put into the the solver, the third sizing, like you, I should have done, mm -hmm. then it does become a bluff by the river. Okay. But because I use the half pot sizing on the flop with this particular hand, the solver picks different um, hands than this one to be our bluffing hand by the river. So this one actually just gives up. I guess if you half so it was, but I was I was trying to, to tricksy you and it didn't work. You tried, but you failed. <laughs> if you, I guess if, you, if you're half potting all your Jack 10, you're going to be out of line. I guess that's what it's basically saying. Um, I think so, to an extent, yeah. yeah. And also, again, like the like you mentioned, the Jack of Hearts is kind of annoying to have mm. since their calling range is um, going to have, you know, Ace-Jack in it. Yeah. Um, and then the combos that actually did want to mostly bluff here are like your 7-8, your 5-4 suited. Mm -hmm. um, even, I think, your 6-5s, yeah. uh, which blocked you know, more of the calling range from villain. Yeah. Uh, like a six and six, six, yeah. et cetera. I'm content with my decision, CG. Yeah. And we shall move little... along. That's a good one. To hand I liked it a lot. It's very interesting. A very interesting line. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. Let's go and take hand number three with CG one, one. Let's go take a look. Okay. And our third hand with the scores at one, one. We have four, three suited in the big blind. GTO noob opens the uh cut off and we are playing 200 zoom yeah um which you frequent and we are going to defend how often are we i don't know <laughs> yes <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> stop doing this uh... <laughs> <laughs> um how often are you defending are you? is this always or uh yeah i think this is 100 okay. percent defend cool against the cutoff and um, we see three four three four three queen seven and we are going to check. Uh, board's pretty good for cough. And cutoff goes for a small bet, uh, which I imagine he's doing with most things. We have bottom pair, no backdoor flush draw. Um, what are your thoughts about beginning to raise and bluff this hand? And do you, or do you think your hand is just uh, for now, without the added equity of a backdoor flush draw, reasonable to continue as a call? Um. So this particular board texture is hard to find a lot of continues on. Okay. Um, I think that this particular hand doesn't perform very well calling because it doesn't have a backdoor flush draw. Um, so that we're forced to fold a lot of our equity on the turn. Okay. Um, so because of that, I can see it as being a decent hand to start turning into a bluff. Mm -hmm. um but you i don't think you can just do it 100 percent of the time i think you have to kind of mix between calling and raising so as to not have too many just bottom pair combos um but the four is actually really relevant as well because you can make some backdoor straights with the five six yeah. coming in mm -hmm. um and then also when the six or the five do come in 
um, it's nice to have some hands to bluff with that aren't actually the nuts, right? So like if we had four, five or five, six, and the turn comes a four or um, a five mm -hmm. or a six, like we we need to have some bluffs in that spot. And what better than mm -hmm. hands that block the nuts? Because yeah. you're going well to check raise that. a bunch of five, four suited and five, six right. suited, right? Cool. Yeah, makes yeah. sense. So you, you like threading in some raises here? Uh, I do. At a frequency. Seems fair. This is big, is it not? Yes. So why is this so big? Obviously, we're polarizing here. There you go. <laughs> so, but this is huge. Yeah. Um, I Talk have two me. sizings. I have a 50% pot and I have a pot size sizing. Okay. And um, if I am going to polarize and raise on this board texture against a small sizing, we can size up. If villain had bet a larger sizing on the flop, let's say villain bet two thirds or three quarters of the pot, then we would use the 50% sizing okay. um, uh, almost exclusively. So it really does depend on what sizing villain uses and then how our hand wants to mix between um, the 50% and the 100%. And generally this one, I think, prefers the 100% because like you mentioned, it's kind of like a polarized hand. We're going to turn into a bluff a yeah. lot of the time. Okay. I accept your um, reasoning. That being said, 50% is fine as well at yeah. a frequency, I think. Mm -hmm. um, GTO Noob calls, and we're taking a turn. I'm wondering, like, I know that you don't <laughs> think too much like this, but I'm wondering, you know, what his continuing range looks like when I do this. You're thinking a lot more about your range, obviously. Um, well, I do, I do think a little bit about, you know, what what they mm -hmm. can call with and whether or not my hand so it's important to know what i'm blocking right because if yeah. i'm not blocking any of their continuing range then i need to know that yeah, and bottom set obviously is the only thing stuff like that yeah, yeah bottom set is the main kind of mm -hmm. hand we're trying to rep in this yeah. scenario mm -hmm. um i imagine you'd also do this with pocket sevens as well which you're going to have um he's going to have obviously i don't think he's ever going to three bet this board i don't think that's i don't think that's something he wants to do um so he's gonna have obviously ace queen king queen queen jack i guess queen 10 these all things are gonna have to defend um aces kings etc and some sets and there it is the little the little dangle you were talking about the six of diamonds and i imagine given your flop speech that we will be continuing um and happily so because of our five four um right. range being in our range yeah. Um, and we do continue, which looks good for two thirds. And you're just thinking about again, um, how this looks for river sizing, right? Um, in the other one, we were sizing 50, 50, 50 in here. You're trying to be, looks like pot on the river or a little bit so more. When I use the hundred percent sizing, um, I'm meant to use the three quarter sizing on the turn. Okay. And if I use the 50% sizing, then I'm meant to overbet the turn. So. Sure. Uh, sizing theory, I think, dictates that we kind of want to size, like you said, structured in a way that we're going to be, again, probably close to the geometric growth of the pot mm -hmm. by the river. Yeah. Um, I, mean, yeah already... I think that's mostly why. Yeah, but... that makes sense. I like it. Um, just wondering if we want to go slightly bigger. I'm thinking he's going to have 140 left. It's going to be... Yeah, that looks about right. It's going to be like just about pot. Um, so... And we've already talked about why you like doing this on, on a six or a five. Um, he calls again and again, I don't see any reason for him to play any raises here. I don't, right. see, I don't see any reason why there'd be any raises from, from, from Mr. Cutoff. Um, seems reasonable to continue everything as a call. Again, I don't really see how you're ever going to fold any of your really strong hands on the river. Um, interesting to see what kind of things that he would fold by the river because obviously all those like this queen 10 plus hands he's gonna have to choose some of them to fold i imagine if we do go all in um the king river i would imagine this is not the best card in the world um king queen improves um but some top pairs get worse how do you feel about the king um so the king, like you mentioned, there's only two combos of king queen suited, and then ace king of diamonds yeah, ace, should be diamonds. like the only other really strong king that gets to the river. Mm -hmm. um, he could theoretically have king seven of diamonds as well. Um, you can have king queen off though. 
King Queen off is yeah, that's an option as well. Um, it's it's a card that you know is I don't I don't want to say like great for his range because at this point our range is so nuts or air yeah that the king isn't really that big of a deal because it's yeah. not going to improve my range or change it like I'm not going to have king three of diamonds here too often if ever I don't think yeah um, maybe I do but I think I would call that more often so. Whether or not he has a king isn't going to really change the absolute value of his hand too much outside of beating something like queen seven or maybe seven three suited if I have that. Yeah. But like, uh, yeah, it's um, it's also scary because if he does have something like queen ten, queen nine, etc., um, or even seven x with diamonds, like, do you really want a hero call in this scenario when you know you have a king that you can call with? Yeah. Fair enough. Um, we also have have a four, which is not irrelevant. I wonder. Does he, I guess he has to bet call five four of spades on the flop. So having a four of spades seems pretty good. Which that's fair. Yeah, blocking the nuts is yeah. always relevant. And obviously we block bomb sets still. Um, when you're, uh, yeah. I'm wondering if you could have picked a river apart from a three, a four, or a five. What you would have chosen? Because there doesn't seem to be any obvious candidates. Um, and it might even actually be okay. Yeah. Um, maybe not. <laughs> There's not many good candidates is what is my point. Um, so the king is like, you know, it looks scary, but as you said, it improves king, queen and ace, king of diamonds. Um, right. but, it, but it also, it also decreases the value of stuff like queen, jack and queen, 10 suited that he could easily have had on flop and have to defend turn so um it's not the worst card in the world but it's also pretty irrelevant like you said to our range because we never really have a king do we yeah i'm i'm less thinking about how the king is going to impact his calling range and more about how little what hand do i want to have here to yeah. bluff with that blocks a relevant mm -hmm. calling range as well as you know keeps me in line without over bluffing mm. i think as an adult we have to be all in here. I can't see any other way out. Yeah. It'd be really strange. Like, obviously we've acknowledged, I've, I've acknowledged that having the, the three, four is a reasonable rate, reasonable hand to mix in on the flop. It's also, a, as we've talked about, the six is a really good hand. It's a really good card to barrel for us. So I can't see how too many things that change, too many things change on a king. Um, our whole value range is unconcerned by a king. Yes, we lose some things, but we're just going to... If we have threes or sevens and he has kings, then have, here, here you go. Have my stack. So it's irrelevant. Um, so I like all in. Yeah, I, so I wouldn't like, like a penny less. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. No punt. I think. Um, I, I imagine you'll know the answers, but before we get them, I want this to get through. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so I guess we got called by one of the hands we've been speaking about because he he does have a lot of good hands. That is the one concern. He's completely uncapped, entirely yeah. uncapped. Um, the only thing that he can't have is the things that we block. Um, but he still has right. kings, queens, aces. I imagine doesn't fold uh, or may have to start folding sometimes. Um, sevens, not sixes, but five four also of the other suits. So unideal yeah. to get called. Um, Ooh. Yeah. That was a rough one, but that is a hard thing to get because he has so many other hands that can call here, and that jack yeah. is that jack is such a dangle. The uh, the fun thing about this hand too is that we can sometimes have a king. I think like king mm. ten suited of diamonds, um, Reasonable. king jack suited of diamonds. But you wouldn't shove, would you? River. Oh, uh, I think you have to actually when you get to the river because get called by this. Looking That's at fun. the equilibrium, they have to call with hands mm -hmm. like this uh, at a frequency. Okay, so like. His hand was actually a call um, some of the time. How was your hand? <laughs> mine was actually a pure shove. Okay. Yeah. Fine. Uh, I, uh, you, you sussed it out correctly. This is a no punt. Mm -hmm. uh, according to the Happy solvers, you know, um, the sixth turn was, it was super good for us. Yeah, our, yeah. Almost our whole check raise range continued betting on the turn uh, because like we talked about, a lot of our check raising range is going to be four, five, um, five, six with some kind of suit sometimes. 
Um, and then, you know, you have sets and the good hands. Um, even I think seven, six might mix on the flop as a check yeah. raise, like seven, six is fade. So that improves even. Certainly worth um, a indeed. So yeah. And then you have, I think some combos of backdoor diamonds that barrel that check raise, like maybe like ace two of diamonds or ace four of diamonds. And then those hands actually block his folding range. So they're right. less good of a bluff um, because they're not blocking. Yeah. They're, yeah. You want to be blocking the calling range, which has a four five and a set in them. I'm, I'm, I'm totally on board. I'm, I'm convinced of this one. I like it. Um, yeah, this one felt great, and then I got called, and I'm like, that's uh, unideal to get called by this hand. Because why it's... does that? Why does that not get through yeah. here? You know, kind of sucks to get looked up by good that. Call, but... Good call on them. They, yeah, well played they... hand all around. Seems seems reasonable. I mean, that was a, that was a hand he was always going to have by the river. So it's, I guess as long as he rolled for it, we can we can take it on the chin. It's actually uh, a hand he has to fold half the time on the turn too. Oh wow! So you actually fold half the time on the turn um, because the turn is so good for us. Ah, uh, I see. Reasonable. Okay. Yeah, so like you, you only get to the river with like half of your combos, and then you call half of those on the river. I think it's just a well played handle round, um, depending on how often GTO noobs up to the things he was doing. But alas, mm -hmm. we are two one up, and we're going to do one more hand before the end of part one. CG, are you ready to take it? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Okay, in our final hand of part one with CG up two one, we have Ace Nine of Spades. The button opens at 200 zoom again and we have a three bet always question mark question mark. um i play a three bet only strategy so yes yes but you're never folding never folding either calling or three betting mm -hmm. and then if you have a three bet only strategy this is pure three 100 three bet yeah oh the little click little click back from the button mm. um how do you respond to this? Um, well, with your whole range, this, with my whole range, mm. uh, I'm 100% flatting aces um, because we are flatting a lot of weaker hands in this scenario. So hands yeah, like makes sense. Um, king nine suited, ace nine suited, jack queen. Um, yeah, we have a lot of calls here, especially against the small sizing. Mm -hmm. So uh, mostly call, but we do have some jams. We're going to probably be jamming hands like tens at a mix. Yeah. Um, and then hands like ace king pure, uh, ace king off pure, ace king would, suited as well. Would you say uh, this sizing? Calling. Would you say this sizing makes your life easier or 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 harder or not really at all anything? Uh, not. It's just a matter of whether you've studied it, honestly. Yeah, like which you have. <laughs> this sizing or the other sizing depends yeah. on if you know how to respond correctly. Yeah. But obviously, in theory, you're just going to be calling more often mm -hmm. the smaller the sizing is. And this seems uh, like a good hand to continue. Yeah, most suited aces. Mm -hmm. We do call. CG. <laughs> <laughs> nine queen ten. <laughs> nine queen ten, two hearts. Not a spade in sight, but we do have bottom pair. We go for the check, which I, I'm glad to see. Um, mm -hmm. We have had some guests in the past that you may know about that don't like to check all the time out of position in these spots. Um, well, and Roberts goes for a check. Cool. I was yeah. interested to see what you were going to do versus small here because I was thinking we probably have a fold. But alas, we go to the turn and it's a king. And I'm mm -hmm. still scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we bet so i wanted to put that out there first because i wasn't i i would always mainly check here but i guess what you're going to tell me is this is probably one of the worst hands you could have so you're starting yeah to see, yeah you're already getting you're already catching on to the theme well you, you you built the theme i'm just i'm just learning you know this is yeah. this is what it's all about um yeah this so, is one of the worst hands you can have you block um the nuts and bottom set which I don't think checks back very often, but what are you, what are you trying to achieve here? Um, to piggyback off of what you were just saying, we do block ace king as well. Um, hands that check back, if we want to consider what his check back range is, sure. it's probably going to be um, those medium value hands in that equity bucketing. 
uh, that I was talking about. So anything mm -hmm. that's medium strength that doesn't want to necessarily bet, bet, get it in, mm -hmm. um, or something like Ace King that doesn't have a made hand yet, but doesn't want to bet, get it in. Um, so blocking Ace King is nice. Um, spades should be the Ace King that they're checking back the most. So we're blocking the most relevant Ace King. And then this is not per se the like the the most the, the worst possible hand in our range, but it's the worst possible hand in our range that is able to block the continuing range of the villain the most. It's the most relevant right? bad hand we have. Exactly. So like five four of diamonds is not really relevant in terms of blocking. No. Um, that might be a bet for a different kind of reason, but mm -hmm. I think the most important thing to understand here is that he has literally only one combo of a jack. Uh, and that's any pair of jacks. Right. Okay. And we have because, a lot more jack x because we called a small four bet, right? Right. So we have queen jack suited, which he's not four betting. We have king jack suited, which he's also not four betting. Um, ace jack suited. We have all of the, the Broadway suited jacks that he doesn't. He has maybe ace jack offsuit. Right, but we also block that with our ace, mm -hmm. and it's very likely that he's going to be betting that on the flop, yeah. Um, because we block the spade, which is again the most common ace that he's going to check back the flop with. Okay. Yep. So, blocking the ace of spades is very relevant in this scenario in the sense that his checkback range is like jacks or some kind of slow played something or some kind of really weak hand that turns some marginal equity. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, fair enough. Um, does he have, does he see, only jack he can have is jacks. I've seen some four bets. I'm not sure if it's these positions, but with like stuff like jack nine suited sometimes. Is that a thing you ever expect him to have? Not really, but no. it's possible he could have it here. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know... If, if it is part of his range, then again, blocking the nine is, is even better. Yeah, seems good. Yeah. Um, we bet, and I am I was very confused to begin with, but I am much more on board than I was when I saw the money go in. Um, yeah. Button calls, um, which we would have preferred not to happen. But I imagine you were expecting it a great deal because yeah. he just has a load that continues here. So the one thing I was really surprised about is that he didn't bet the flop, honestly. Um, yeah. I expect him to bet flop at a very, very high frequency. So I wasn't really sure as to what he would intuitively be checking. Um, and so then I thought it's probably marginal hands that, like I mentioned before, aren't on the... Like, I think aces or kings might just jam the flop. I think we can almost take away aces and kings. Okay. Um Maybe not jam the flop, but they're they're more likely to bet than check, I think. Uh, unless they have like ace ace with the diamond heart. I don't know. It's 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 a really weird spot because intuitively I would have thought MN Roberts needs to bet at a high frequency in position after four betting because what hands is he four betting that doesn't interact with his flop? Yeah, literally like none. And so and like, a lot of them want protection as well. Right. And then we kind of smash or brick the flop. Mm-hmm. I would say like we have ace five suited for calling sometimes that we're not yeah. jamming. We have, you know, Queens in our range at a very low frequency. If ever, I don't mm -hmm. think we even have Queens actually. Um, and we don't have tens cause we mentioned we would be jamming, jamming those yeah, yeah. at a frequency. So like we, we are kind of like really heavy towards a Jack. So mm -hmm. it's not even so much that we're concerned about what he has at this point It's that we, we just have so many Jack X's in jack, our range. Yeah. And we need to find some bluffs and this shows down a lot worse than some of our other, other hands. That maybe right. want to check. So I, I, I'm, I can, I can see the merits. I can see the merits. Four of spades, four of spades. Um, I mean, I can't imagine that you could possibly say what you've said on the turn and not be all in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that would be, I mean, that would be egregious. <laughs> and we're um, on top of that by the river, unblocking all of the diamonds and and hearts. Yeah. yeah. So, so we're all in. How do I feel? How do I feel about this? Um, I'm not certain. I have to be careful when I say stuff. I disagree with people like you because you're too good. I'm not certain I agree <laughs> that he that he would always bet like the flop necessarily with kings or aces. I think he would always yeah. call the turn once he does that. I don't think he's going to shove. So I think he would check back sometimes, especially especially with like maybe you know aces with a, 
I know that Aces with the Heart and Kings with the Heart have more um, equity than them without, but I think that those are hands that are reasonable to check back. Yeah, he obviously always has jacks, which he always will just flat on the turn. Um, um, I'm wondering what the kind of what the kind of hands like because again, we're half pot on the river. We need him to fold. We need to we need him to we need to find him to get him to find some folds here. Um, and I guess Ace. Like what, you, what I'm trying to think what, you, what you're hoping to fold, and now we kind of want him to have. He's ace never going to fold. King, yeah, ace king, right? We but wanted ace, to have. Yeah. Hands. So now having an ace is bad. So right? you made the argument to bluff against the hands that he is actually going to have checking back on the flop. Yeah. No, I, I don't know what I'm saying. What I'm saying is like, is it not bad <laughs> now to have an to, to have because we want him to no, fold no, ace king. Right. You're right. Yeah. If he is holding hands like Ace King, which yeah. we talked about him checking back, and then you even mentioned like I tried to convince you the other side, but you said that he probably does have some aces and kings for checking back flop, yeah. right? Yeah. I so don't those love are probably hands that he's not loving on the river. Yeah. And I think he I think he needs to fold. Uh, can we shove anything that isn't a jack? Can we shove any two pairs? Sets? Well, also think about how often we have a jack. Right. Yeah. Often. Often. We have a lot of Jack X in our range. Yeah. But but would you? But like, having a nine seems like irrelevant because he would always bet the flop with pocket nines, and I don't think they four bet very often. And then having an ace now seems pretty bad because we want him to fold a hand like Ace King. So I'm not. I'm just not sure how in love with that. And also, he's getting an insane price. Do you, are, you, are you? I'm just not in love with the general vibe I'm getting. What do you think? <laughs> what's, our, what's our bluff here yeah that is a good point i know that we have to bluff um but i'm not sure like obviously could we not have a hand that god i don't know man <laughs> so hard to bluff isn't it i mean maybe we could just have like a hand that has just like way less equity i don't know like seven eight i don't know we have seven eight well, that doesn't really block any of his calling range. Like, if we're going to block something, it's nice to have some kind of yeah, but we've blocker. Just, right? is, this not an, is this not a reverse blocker? Is this not a bad, un, is this not a bad blocker to have well, now? If he's supposed to call ace king on the river, or if he's supposed to call aces, yeah, or if he four bets something like king nine suited, mm. pre. You just, just warned me they were going to get harder, didn't you? Yeah, I'd, yeah. Like I sympathise with the fact that we need to bluff, and I'm just not exactly sure what we're going to bluff. Um, right. At the same time, like we don't block. Like I said, we block Ace Jack, but we yeah, Ace Jack off is the only thing we really block, right? Oh god, I'm so Ace Jack is actually a pretty big part of yeah. Like yeah, we're blocking. It. So his value range for calling river, he could have stuff like King Nine, Ace King, Aces, and Ace Jack offsuit. Right. But I think Ace King is a really high like getting Ace King to fold is really good for us, right? Oh yeah, it's great. But then having an ace is therefore bad. Well he can't have Ace King as much if we block it. But we want him to fold it. No? Well the the combo of Ace King he's gonna call is the one that doesn't block the hearts. Mate. <laughs> Um, I've got to make a decision, but the thing is, if I this tell you that one of black hearts to call, right? If I say punt, then then what's going to happen is that 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 you're going to ask me what I want to bluff, and I'm just going to have to say like seven eight or something. We don't like three that. bet seven eight suited from the small blind, by the way. Ever? No. I thought it was a little bit of it. Then we literally don't have anything left. You're gonna. I'm not gonna let you talk me into this. I don't think. But I'm just trying to figure out okay. what I'm gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna try to think about what what I wanna what I wanna bluff. Um. Like I'm trying well, to think. Think about your small blind three betting range. Yeah, I know. I'm thinking about it, and I just this board is just so ridiculous that I'm just not sure exactly what that I end up wanting to choose. You might end up getting me here, honestly. Well, that was my my thought process too. Is yeah. I just had all the jack x, and I had no idea what to bluff, and this seemed like I'm blocking some combos that can call against us that are better. I'm just gonna go with punt. But I can't okay. just I can't justify it any more than I already have because okay. I mean I haven't justified it very well, but at the same time I'm getting a really I'm getting a really bad taste in my mouth about this one. I don't love having an ace and I think a nine is just a bit of a dangle. So You know, I I agree with you. The right spot to bluff never feels good. Yes. It never feels good. But having nothing never feels exact, good. And a, a a high this was a perfect perfectly played hand. This was a perfectly played hand. <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, I wasn't, I wasn't going to get everything right. 
I, 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 <laughs> what I should have done was gone with... The thing is, I can't decide because you told me before what you were going to try and convince me that things weren't pumps. So when I yeah. hear you talking about like trying to convince me of this one, I'm like, no, I'm not, right. no, I'm not, I'm not having it because it just felt awful. But you're right. Like what on earth do we have? We don't have those low suit connectors then. Unfortunately, yeah. I already gave you a note. I already gave you a punt. So you, I mean, he's called. So oh yeah, my, my mean, problem is, my, my problem is probably less, less theory based, I guess. It's more like we need him to fold. Uh, what, well, well, we need to fold. How often do we need to fold to make this profitable? Probably not often, right? Um, isn't it like a third of the time or something? Yeah. I don't know. So you're, you're better at math than me, probably. <laughs> There's absolutely zero chance that that's true. Um, yeah, I just think that um, you know what? This is probably fine, but I've already said it now. It's too late. I just want to see what he has. I'm just too confused, man. All right, that's gonna call. Cool. <laughs> 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 that's gonna call. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, I, 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 I feel like I've tried my very best to articulate why I don't like why I don't like this, but I think you're right. Very I don't, difficult part. I don't yeah. like it because it's ugly, as opposed to <laughs> I don't like it because it's bad, which is probably right. which is probably where I've where I've where you've got where I've gone wrong here. Um, yeah. But in theory, uh, uh, yeah. I imagine like I just cannot think what else we have. But I just didn't know how I felt about having an ace. It's very very confusing hand that really really messed me up actually. Um, yeah. It it messed me up in game two, but I, I don't know why, but I somehow found it as a bluff. And I was just like, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I have so many Jack X in my calling range and he literally shouldn't have like any Jack Jack in his, like his four betting range for like the, the preflop is kind of what dictated me calling or bluffing in this spot mm. is because he has ace Jack offsuit and he has Jacks for four betting. Maybe he has Jack nine suited at a frequency. Um, but how many Jack X's does he have? Like Queen Jack is a natural call. King Jack is a natural call. He's Jack suited as a natural call. Um, Jack 10 suited natural call. Like you don't have a lot of Jacks in your four betting range button versus small blind. So ultimately that's why mm. I just shoved this hand because I blocked the combos that if he did have a Jack would be these ace Jack and Jack nine suited. Mm. Having seen what he had, I now want to make my argument <laughs> exploitatively because you said you expect him to, you said yourself, you expect him to bet all the time on the flop and you're very confused I'm why he didn't bet the flop. Yeah, bet but this hand actually. But if, yeah. if he's not going to bet everything on the flop, does that mean, not mean he's going to be imbalanced and therefore what makes the most, if you're going to, if you're not going to bet this flop, what makes the most sense when you four bet and then get checked to and check back is pocket jacks. It really is pocket jacks because you're never going to check queens, ten, nines. You're probably, like you said, aces and 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 uh and kings are going to want to bet so therefore is he do you not are you not concerned that when he does check back when you expect him to always bet that he has this hand like way too often no because i think he can also have queens i think he can have aces like you mentioned at a frequency as well as like i don't think it's um it's been a while since i looked at the solve for this but i'm i'm fairly sure it's not just square jacks mm -hmm. to check back um i think no, ace king is a big part of it in theory uh, i don't i don't expect it to to, to check back all that often yeah. at all but that's why i'm worried when he checks back i'm feeling I, I didn't think so either i mean i could pull up the the solve again but it was it was a while since i looked mm. at it and i can't remember what exactly it was he was supposed to do but i i do know that i think we both played the hand uh well according okay. to the solver well in theory very well played hand i and you know it's a good punt on no punt hand if it, if it completely flummoxes me, <laughs> which this one totally did. I tried to give a punt, couldn't think of why, saw the hand yeah. and then gave a reason. Complete butcher yeah. from me. But you're 2-2, two, two. like it or not, this is my show. So, yeah. CG, we are going to take a break now for the YouTube, uh, for part one. We, we, it was perfectly balanced at 2-2. Two, two. We're going to say a quick outro, if you don't mind, summing up the first mm -hmm. four hands. So we're going to do that now. Okay, guys, that's the end of part one. CG, have you enjoyed yourself so far? I uh, I have. I like uh, I like sharing some interesting spots. You yeah. know, it's uh, it makes me feel a little less crazy in a very difficult game to figure out. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure it's going to come across that way <laughs> after this one. <laughs> but um, very fun hands. The last one in, in particular definitely definitely had me uh, all over the place. Um, but thanks a lot for coming on, guys. Um, or oh, Chris. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't already checked out CG on Twitch, you definitely should go and do that. Really, really great stream. Thoroughly recommend it. Um, 
And yeah, that's going to do it for part one. We've got three more hands to do. I'm reliably informed that they are increased levels of spice. So, you know, if this wasn't enough for you, this hand, then we've apparently got three more. We will be coming out next week because right now I should be in Vegas if all things have gone well. Um, so it should be coming out next week as opposed to having a, a gap like we normally do. Um, for now, guys, that's going to do it. Uh, take care, stay safe, and I will see you on the next part. Bye-bye.